Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know when you're watching this. But I am sitting in the eye doctor's office for TJ. He's about to, <laughs> he's smiling at me. He's about to get an eye exam and I don't know how I feel about the process. I mean, as an adult, I'm okay with it, but for a little baby, oh my God, it looks cool. So they start the process off by putting like, they, they're doing like four sessions of drops in his eyes. The last session, the fourth session, they're going to numb it and then do the exam. Why does that bother me? I mean, as you can see from the first vlog, I freaked out because he was getting a shot and he handled it just fine. So I'm assuming he'll handle this exam just fine. I wonder if the drops make him sleepy. Just a moment ago, he was hungry and they're like, don't feed him because we gotta lay him down and we don't want him to spit up. And I'm like, my champ don't spit up his food, especially when he hungry. I was just here breaking down how the exam would go. So they're giving me permission to record it. She let me know in advance, it looks harsh. That's all she needed to say, because I'm ready to freak out. Y'all know how I am about my baby and these doctors and what they're doing. I'm all in their business. I need to become whatever they became in eight to 10 years. I need to be that in 15 minutes so I know what you're doing to my baby. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus, my heart. Okay, I promise I'm not going to act up, y'all. I'm not. Hubby is not here. <laughs> I'm not going to act up. I could do this. I have to talk to myself now. Okay, so part of the exam, after they put the drops in, I am to hold TJ, and when I hold him, they will um, put these clips to hold his eyes open so the doctor can the doctor can look inside his eye and make sure he's okay. Um, she mentioned primarily because TJ was born prematurely. That's why these exams are important because, you know, premature babies, some things just don't develop all the way, so they want to check everything. So I asked you guys, oh, I'm here and making sure that his eyesight is great, but I know it is because he looks at me and smiles and he's so happy when he sees me or his daddy. So I know he's fine. But there is a child in the office that's not handling this visit too well. So, I'm gonna stop recording to give them a little bit of privacy because I know if my child was freaking out like that, I wouldn't want nobody to, um, to have that in the background. So I really hope the kid is okay. You know what, I do actually have one question though. For children, right? Do you think like, however you respond to certain things, they pick that up from you, like the parent? Like if you freak out about a doctor's visit, they'll freak out eventually? Like, do you think you can pass on fear of something to your child? I wonder that because I know maybe he's just a baby and he's, he doesn't have his own reaction, but I wonder if that's something that you can pass on. Can you pass right. on fear of something to a child? I am leaving the eye doctors with TJ and all I can tell you is the amount of time I spent in this office was not acceptable. Is the appointment important? Yes. 
that's what kept me in there. The fact that I know this appointment was very important. However, <sighs> my time should be highly considered when an appointment is made. So, my question is this. When you make a doctor's appointment for any kind of doctor, let's say the appointment is 8.30. That appointment is for me to get there, right? When I get there, I should fill out whatever paperwork I need to fill out, and then I'm seen by the doctor. I don't care what kind of appointment it is. Well, actually, it does matter. Whatever you're getting done, for whatever reason. But two hours? I'm at a doctor's office for two hours? And it doesn't concern nobody? Now, I know you're asking yourself, did I say anything? Yeah, I did. I said, excuse me. Um, what would happen right now if I reschedule this appointment? They're like, his eyes is already dilated. You don't want to go through this again. Well, I do have to go through this again. I would have to go through it again because I have to do a follow-up appointment, which I'm really questioning whether I should do it with this office or not. First of all, you're already 30 minutes away, 25 to 30 minutes away from my home. And I didn't choose you. You just happened to be at the hospital to do my baby's eye doctor, so I'm following up with you. So, I'm, I'm just a little concerned because at the end of the day, I don't expect a doctor's visit, regardless of what doctor you're visiting, I don't expect a doctor's visit to be like a fast food chain where I'm in line and I get my food within five minutes or I get my service within five minutes. Yeah, you could take your time providing the service, not have me sit in there waiting and waiting and waiting for what? And literally, the exam took five minutes. Literally. I was in the office for two hours for a five minute exam. That, that's, not, that's not acceptable. Maybe I'm being a little, I don't know. I was kind though. I was really kind, I was patient, I believe I was. Because I sat there and I spoke to you guys for a little bit. I played with TJ until he fell asleep. And then on top of that, it was way past TJ's feeding time. And they told me not to feed him because they don't want him to spit up. He didn't even ask me when was his scheduled feeding time, which he does have a schedule, people. So, I don't know. I'm really thinking about reconsidering this, um, re reconsidering this, this appointment that's coming up in a few weeks. Because I need some place where they know what they have to do. Between each eye drop session, it was like, wait 10 minutes. And then after that, they don't numb the eyes until the doctor walks in because it works instantly, which I'm grateful for. However, what about the 45 minutes I was sitting out waiting? And you scheduled me for 8.30, but the reason I'm waiting for 45 minutes is because you felt like it was okay to put other people ahead of me because you're waiting for what? I don't get it. You put the last session of eye drops in and then you're supposed to wait 10 minutes. So you thought you had enough time to see like six other patients 
before you see me. That's not proper time management if you ask me. I believe once you put the last session of eye drops in, you bring me in the office, you bring me inside the room, and the doctor comes sees me within 20 minutes. I'm willing, I know the average wait time should be 10 to 20 minutes. I was sitting in a hallway for 45 minutes for a five minute exam. So just to give people a heads up, let me, let me help you understand something. To all the doctors out there, I'm going to be honest with you. Because of certain fields you're in, some of you take ridiculously long and it's not that serious. I mean, I hate to be a little bit blunt, but my OBGYN don't even take that long. I mean, seriously, and she has a packed office every time I go, from, literally from early morning to her last appointment is normally like 4.30, 5 o'clock. And I've, I've been one of her last appointments before. And even then, she sees you, she speaks with you, she takes her time with you, and you're not waiting in her office for an hour after your appointment. I'll tell you that much. And that's an OBGYN. I just left an eye doctor's office. I'm in your office for two hours for a five minute exam. Five minutes. So, I'm sorry I had to vent a little bit because I believe that's ridiculous. Places that I expect to wait long, an emergency room. You don't make an appointment to go to the emergency room. Maybe, yeah, I, I'm going to be honest. All the doctors that I have for me, no. My pediatrician, we just recently met because TJ was released from the hospital and you got to make that appointment like literally 48 hours after. His office was packed. And I believe I heard like four or five people had the same appointment time. And I was in a waiting area, 10 minutes, and then they brought me back to the room, the exam room for TJ, and I waited another 10 minutes. And he was in there. And I don't know why I can't get over this. Hello, my love doves. A whole day went by I didn't talk to you after this morning so I am currently on my way to church it's Tuesday night it's Bible study so that means it's gonna be fine when the pastor be preaching Lord Jesus he gonna everybody it's like having everybody house he be sitting there the Lord be using him to tell everybody business you see my baby back there that's my grown baby girl. Oh Lord, that's my grown baby girl. She had in her face. My love doves, y'all gonna get to know her. She be doing hell. If y'all in town, y'all need y'all hair done, she'll hook you up. Her and her little Bessie back there. Look, she had it from the camera too. That don't make no sense. That does not make no sense. Y'all see hubby, he came to the house, picked me up so we can go. But he's so tired. He did come home and eat dinner though. I made, oh. Shepherd's pie. Mm -hmm. I did it my way though. I don't know if anybody else make it that way. See, there we go again. Fly. You be coming in here. I feel like it's going to fly out when we least expect it. <laughs> y'all hey I'm so distracted so let me tell y'all about that shepherd's pie so y'all already know the ground beef y'all season it up you know cook the ground beef or whatever the case may be um I did that but I added corn regular corn from the can I know some people don't like canned goods but listen quick and easy okay 
So I took the corn and I put it in there with the ground beef after it was already cooked. So I put the corn in there and mixed it up real nice and let that settle. And so that way it could separate real nice. And then I took um, boxed mashed potato, Idaho mashed potato. I don't deal with no other brand because I realize it comes out weird. And then people look at you like, ew, you use boxed mashed potato? You supposed to use real potatoes. It's the best. You don't know how to cook if you don't do it with real potatoes. Yes, they do all that. They so extra. No, boxed mashed potato. And I make it like it's real potatoes. And everybody still say it's bussing. You feel me? Um, then I had shredded cheese. Um, I use the Publix brand shredded cheese. The cheese, as long as it's a four cheese mix brand. So that way you get all kind of flavors in there. You're straight. But what makes my shepherd's pie different? I take croissant. Was it Pillsbury? Yeah. Yeah, Pillsbury croissant. They have the skinny ones. I get two of those and I lay it flat on the bottom of the pan. You ain't think to do that, did it? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. It be so good. People don't even realize it's down there. They just tear it all up. I'm like, oh, did you like the croissant at the bottom of it? Oh, that's what it was at the bottom. Yeah, everybody had the same reaction. <sighs> but yes, I lay it across the pan. I put um, I, I put it in the oven to let it bake or rise, I guess you would say. Um, don't let it get too crispy. You just know it's done because croissants don't take long to bake in the oven. You put that there and then you put the ground beef on top. You put the cheese, and then you put your mashed potato on top of that, and you put another layer of cheese, and then you put it in the oven and you broil it. Not boil, broil. And you allow the cheese to melt and then get a little crispy. The cheese will fuse everything together, but it'll do that.